everybody, Heather here. Um, today we're going to work on our May watercoloring card kit of the month and we're going to do this cute dandelion girl. This is a new Whimsy Stamps image. It's really cute. Um, they come on red rubber. It's already mounted for you so all you have to do is cut it out and stamp your image in color. I've already stamped my image on um, Canson Watercolor 100 140 pound watercolor paper with um, archival jet black ink. So let's get started. Alright, so I've already got my water brush ready. I've tested it on my paper towel to make sure it's not too wet. And I've got my um, Tin Holtz ink palette right here. And all this stuff can be found over at Heather's Hobby Haven if you need some. So I'm going to open my ink palette and I'm going to start by doing um, the sky. And for the sky, we're going to use tumbled glass. So I'm going to grab just a little bit of that onto the end of my um, my water brush. So I've got my just a little bit there. And I try to work um, pretty fast with it. I don't want it to dry. So I'll do just a little area. And then I'll wipe my brush off to get my excess ink. And then I'll use just the water that's on there to wipe it away from my image. And blend it out into the background. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So again, I'll pick up some more of my temple glass. And I'll go up here and continue around. And wipe it away so that it, it blends out into the paper. And she's got some dandelion puffs up here, so we want to go ahead and get those too. I want to incorporate those into my into my shadow. So I'm going to go up here and do a little bit around each one. And then again, I'm going to wipe it away from the image while it's still wet. And you can make your background as um, light or as dark as you want. I just let it dry in between layers. So I'd go all the way around first and then if I wanted to darken it up I would come back and add another layer after it's dried. My brush is feeling a little dry, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a little squeeze to re get my get some water down on there and test it on my paper towel to make sure it's not too wet. But I want it to be so when I put my ink down on the paper, it wipes smoothly. It doesn't feel like it's dragging. It's a lot easier to, to blend it out into your background too if it's a little bit damp.
Okay, so I went all the way around. And I don't want mine to be too dark, so I'm going to leave it like this. But you could go in and maybe darken up up here where the dandelions are just a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. So it's a little bit, gives it a little bit of a shadowing around the outside. Um, you could also use um, a sponge dauber and um, the tumble glass ink pad and just add your own clouds out here. That'd look really pretty. So now that I've got this side dry over here, I want to give her a little bit of shadows because I want my sun to come from this way and kind of make it so that this side of her body is a little bit darker over here. So to do that, I'm going to add a little bit of weathered wood over here on this side where the shadows would be. And not too much, just a little bit. So like the behind her legs right here would be a little bit shadowed and underneath of her skirt would be shadowed a little bit. I'm just gonna dab a little bit of weathered wood on there and then blend it back out here into my tumbled glass so to just give it a little bit of a shadow behind her body. Maybe this ink pen, this um, watering can would have a little bit behind it. Maybe a little bit in the crook of her hand right here. But just a little bit. I can just barely see that. Okay, let's move on to her face. So for that, I'm going to use Tattered Rose to start with. So I'm going to grab a little bit of Tattered Rose on the end of my brush. And I want to lay down my brush where I want it to be darkest again. So I want it to be darkest right next to her hairline. So I'm going to lay a little bit down there, get her ear along her neck. And then I'm going to wipe my little bit of excess on my brush away. And I'm going to use that to spread out onto her face. Remember, this is just your first coat, so it's okay that it's pretty light. We're going to add some more. So while that's drying, I'm going to go down here and I'll get her hand. So again, I want it to be darkest on the bottom. So I'm going to grab a little bit of ink and then brush that up onto the rest of her hand. Same for this hand, only I want the back side of her arm to be, to be darker. So I'm going to put it back here and then wipe it towards the front. And she's got a little bit of her leg showing down here. So let's go ahead and give those a little bit of color. I'm going to put my ink right where her skirt's touching and the back and then I'm going to wipe the ink towards the front of her leg. And then while all that's drying I'm going to go up here and add a little bit more color to her face. So again I lay my brush down where I want it to be darkest. And then I use my excess ink to wipe it towards the front of her face. And I do the same thing for her arms and her leg. We'll go back and add our second coat. And you could put on a, a few coats depending on how heavy you put it on the first time. So you may see that you put four or five coats on, but let it dry in between each one. All right, so now her face is dry, but I want to add a little bit heavier shadows back here along the side. So for that, I'm going to grab my laminated sheet. And I'm going to get a little bit of tattered rose onto my, onto my brush. 
and I'm just going to put it on my laminated sheet like that and then I'm going to grab a little bit of tea dye onto my brush and I'm just going to mix that in so it changes just color just a little bit and you want to maybe have a little piece of scratch paper um, to try it out to see how dark it is and see if you need to add more or just um, it's up to you if you want to try it first but that's how I mix all my colors is on my on my little laminated sheet so then I'll grab a little bit of my mixed color onto my brush and I want to darken her face up here by her hairline so I'm going to add that right here along that and then I'll just brush that out with just water and maybe darken up the inside of her ear so I'll put a little bit of my mixed color right there and then maybe some shadows along her dress and the bottom of her arm same with this arm and then we'll get our leg right underneath of her dress Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, now I'm going to add a little bit of color to her cheek with um, Aged Mahogany. And Aged Mahogany is pretty dark, so you'll want to make sure to just get a little bit on the end of your brush. So I've just got barely a little dab on the very, very end. And I'm going to put that on her cheek. Get a little bit more. That wasn't quite enough. And see how dark that is? Oh. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to pick a little bit up with my brush and wipe it back off on my paper towel. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry and when it's dry we'll go back over it with um, tattered rose and kind of blend it in this a little bit. So while that's drying I'm going to go and work on her hair and for her hair we're going to use old paper and antique linen so like I did with my my skin tone I'm going to grab a little bit of old paper onto my brush and I'm going to put it over here on my laminated sheet and then I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to go get a little bit of antique linen onto my brush and then I'm going to take it and I'm just going to brush a little bit onto her hair move it around so it covers her whole head and it looks green when you put it on but after you've moved it around a little bit it'll change to kind of a light brown blondish color kind of ash blonde so don't fret that when you first stick it on it's it looks like her hair is green <laughs> that's that's the way it looks all right, so while that's drying, I'm going to go down here and we're going to do um, a little bit more color on her face. So we're going to grab a little bit of just tattered rose, and I want to kind of calm down this cheek color. So I'm going to run my brush right down where I want it to be shadowed again, wipe my brush off, and then I'm just going to smooth it over towards the edge where her nose is. kind of blend out her cheek a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit of padding. Mine's kind of floating around there. Okay, and if that wasn't how I want it, I'll come back and, and fiddle with it some more here in a bit, but I'm going to let that dry because it's wet. And while that dries, I'm going to go and add a little bit of color to her hair. So for her shadows this time, I used brush corduroy. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that on the end of my brush. And I'm just going to add that where I want her hair to be, have a little bit of shadows on it. So where her hair tie scrunches her hair up, it's going to be dark. So I'm going to add a little bit on there, right around there. And I have a lot of ink still on my brush. So I'm going to wipe all that off. And then I'm going to use what I have here laid down to smooth away from her hair tie and out into her hair. And I'm just going to brush it until it runs out. Like that. 
I'm going to do the same thing for the ponytail. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my brush corduroy onto my brush. And then I want it to be her ponytail to be dark where it comes out of her hair tie. And then she's got a little curve right here, so I want to kind of darken that up. So I'm going to give that a little bit of color. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off. And I'm going to use just the water to smooth out my line. Like that. And I got a little bit right here on her ponytail holder, so I'm going to wipe that off with just water. If you get it wet, you can just kind of brush it away. Or you can use your paper towel too to dab it up. Alright, that looks pretty good. I like her hair and I'm liking how her cheek now looks. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to go down and I'm going to work on her dress. So for her dress, it's green this time, kind of a light green, yellow color. So I'm going to use shabby shutters. I'm going to grab some of that on my brush. I'm going to mix it. So I'm going to put it down here on my laminated sheet. And then to that, I'm going to add mustard seed. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that on the end of my brush and just swirl it into my, to my shabby shutters. And again, you may want to try it on a piece of um, scratch watercolor paper first to see how dark it is. Or you can be like me. I just wing it. I just mix it up and then start painting and if I don't like it I just don't I switch colors in the middle because my first coat is really light and I don't I can always add more layers on there okay so I've mixed it and I've um, wiped all of the paint off of my brush but I'm gonna grab a little bit of my mixed color now and again remember lay it down where you want it to be darkest so this time I want to be the back of her sleeve underneath of her arm and see, I can tell already that I don't have enough green in there. It's pretty yellow. So I'm going to wipe that around. Wipe my brush here. And pick up some of the paint off of it so it lightens it out. And then I can come back and add a little bit more. So I'm going to put a little bit more of my shabby shutters into my paint. Green it up a little bit more. Okay, so now I've got some more green, but that's drying, so we'll leave that and let that go for right now. So I want to have some some colors down here, so I'm going to go along where I want it to be darkest on my skirt. And I don't want it to dry, so I'm going to wipe my brush off. And then I'm just going to use the water to spread it out. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for just a second. So while that's drying, I'm going to go up here and add a little bit of color to our hair tie. Get that started. Okay, let's do, while that's drying, let's go down here and add a little bit of color to our socks. Okay, that's looking a little bit more green. Whoops, I forgot the top of her sock. So I've added enough shabby shutters in there to turn it a green color. So let's go up here and do her dress, which that yellow looks really pretty too. But we're going to add a little bit of shadows in here and add a little bit of green. So again, touch down where you want it to be darkest. Okay, let's do some of these folds on her skirt. She's got some great lines on here already. So I'm going to put a little bit of ink in each of these little folds. 
She's also got a little valley right here where this watering can handle is. I'm going to add a little bit of color in there. I'm going to darken that up just a little bit. Here's a fold. Let's add a little bit up here at the top. Soften some of my lines. It's looking kind of splotchy. She's got a few little pleats here underneath of her skirt. I'm going to go ahead and give those a little dab of color. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that. And I didn't color her the ruffles on her dress, her sleeves, or the petticoat. I left those and um, just added some stickles to them later. So we're going to leave that like that, and then we're going to go down here and work on her shoe. And for her shoe, she I did those black soot. So let's get a little bit of that. Remember, it's black soot, so it goes a long way. So get it a little bit, and just put a little bit on there. And we'll let that first coat dry, and then we'll come back and add a little bit more. And while that's drying, let's go and put a little bit of color onto um, our watering can. And for our watering can, I used um, aged mahogany. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that on my brush. And I want my, my can to be darkest over here on this side, so I'm going to lay down my ink there first, and then just bring it over to this side of my can. Grab a little bit more. a little bit on her dress there. I'll wipe that off. And then we'll let that dry. So while that's drying, I'm going to go down here and add a little bit of, um, I'm going to put some ground down. So for the ground, I used um, pumice stone. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that. I'm just going to cast a shadow backwards, so I'm going to bring my ink out this way. But I still want it to be a little bit underneath of the watering can and underneath of her feet. get that started. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. Maybe come back and add another color in there. So for, she's got some dandelion puffs up here too. Let's add a little bit of color to those. 
And for that, I also use pumice stone. So I'm going to grab just a little bit on the end of my brush. And work a little bit at the base of the, the, the dandelion puffs. And then wipe my brush off and just lightly brush it towards the top. Get a little bit on this little top of her dandelion here. Okay, and let's go down and add a little bit more color to our watering can. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of my aged mahogany. And I'm going to again start over here on this side, put a little bit of ink down, and then brush it towards the middle. I think maybe I'll darken up this side a little bit too. So I'll bring down my, put a line of my aged mahogany on this side and then wipe my excess off and then come back with just water and lightly brush it towards the middle again. That'll give it a little bit of depth there on the outside like it's curving. And let's get the bottom a little bit more. I squeezed my brush and now it's really damp. So I'm going to wipe some of that off a little bit. It's just pooling like crazy. I'm actually going to grab my paper towel and suck a little bit of that up. I got a little bit too wet there. So I'm going to let that dry for just a second. Let's add a little bit more to our handle. And she's got the watering can has some leaves there so for that I'm going to do um, forest moss and there's hardly any it's just a little bit so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my forest moss and just dab it onto each little leaf just to give them a little dab of color and then we better go down here and add another layer to our shoes so we'll grab a little bit of black soot Give your shoes another little coat. And you may have to add a few layers to your shoes depending on how dark you want those. So, but let it dry in between. So then I'm going to go and I'm going to get, there's a little flower here, so I'm going to use tumbled glass on that to color my flower. And then on the ground down here, I'm going to give it a little bit more shadow behind her. For that, I'm going to use um, walnut stain. I'm going to grab just a little bit of walnut stain, and I'm just going to brush it right underneath of her shoe a little bit, and right behind her, and then brush it out so it makes it just a little bit darker underneath. Just like that. Okay, she's looking pretty good. I'm kind of liking her I like that. So this month you also got in your um, in your kit, you got a Wink of Stella light green glitter pin. And to use that on, I use that on her dress. So to use that, you just, I take an, my nonstick craft mat and I just color right on top of my nonstick craft mat with the, um, the glitter pin. And then I take my brush and I pick up a little bit of the glitter on the end of my brush and I just add it to my dress. So I might go along her sleeve. And you can't really see it on camera, but it, it gives it quite a bit of sparkle. So 
So again, you pick up a little bit of your glitter, and I'm going to add some down here on the folds. And you can add it wherever you want. That's up to you. But it's green, so it kind of blends right in with the color of your dress. You can also, so that's just adding a little bit of color to, to the dress you've already colored. Or you could take your dress, put that one over there. You could take your dress, here's the girl, I colored her hair and her face. But you could take just her dress and color it with the glitter pen instead of using the, the Distress Inks. Just use the glitter pen. So I'm going to color some onto my nonstick craft mat and I'm going to pick it up with my water brush and then I'm going to come in and add it to her dress. And as you wipe it out, it does get lighter. So put it down like you would your Distress Inks. Start where you want it to be darkest and then pull it out towards the to the shiny area. And you may have to color on your craft mat a couple of times with your pen. So I'm going to grab a little bit more. I get it all colored and it's a nice pretty green color and you can also go in let's say you wanted it to be a little bit darker just take your pen and color right on some of these lines maybe around the back of her sleeve and then be quick and then you could go in with your water brush and lightly dab over it and smooth it out But you don't want it to dry too much. These pens dry pretty quick, so you don't want to leave it sitting for, for too long. So just do a little section at a time. Like here, we'll go down these little lines right here. And then put your pen down, and then use your water brush to go over your line to soften it. Or you can just leave it too if you wanted to color like the underside of her skirt right here. Just color the pin right into those little spots and then let it dry and that'll be even darker. And you can do her little ponytail that holds her up here. But if you do put it on directly onto the paper, it is a lot more sparkly, so you have to kind of consider that. So that is our. So this is our um, card this month, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, have a great day. Thanks.